Hey guys, it is a Tuesday night and we are coming to you a little bit early. Why? Because most of you are on summer vacation, so you have time to watch the show at this time. You know, try to unwind before the good shows get on, like America's Got Talent and Songland. Um, but anyways, uh, me and Megan wanted to talk really quick with you guys about um, how to save some money at theme parks and all that good stuff. Um, but before we get started, I want Megan to kind of introduce herself and tell us where she blogs at. So Megan, where can everybody find you? Hello everybody, I am Megan um, with Megan Gets Real and I am on um, YouTube, Facebook, a little bit of everywhere. You're gonna see different content based on where you find me. If you find me on Facebook, the video is gonna be a little different than what you see on YouTube. But I'm making gets real across the board pretty much everywhere. Um, we talk about Florida fun. We talk about family and we talk about life. Just ways to kind of simplify things while keeping it real. Awesome. And I'm Nicole Mooch, you guys. I blog over at the Creative Stay at Home Mom. You can find me on social and everywhere at the Creative Sam. And we, you know, like to travel. We love Disney. We love Orlando. So we base ourselves on doing just a little bit of everything. Um, so we're not gonna waste any time because there is a lot of to talk about. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and get started and talk about ways that you can save money at the theme parks. So Megan, um, what are a couple ways your you and your family have saved money going to the theme parks? Okay, so before we ever set foot in the parks, like let's say that we're going to do a Disney day um, and I know that the kiddos are going to want an autograph book or they're going to want, um, you know, a little wand that glows and blinks and makes all the noise or whatever the case may be. We're going to go ahead and hit the Disney outlets first. Um, there's two of them in Orlando. There's one on the end of I drive and then there's one at the Violin Premium Outlets. And what that is, is that's Disney merchandise that's official licensed product. And it's at a discount because it's either last season stuff or stuff that they overbought. So what we'll do is we'll head over there because, I mean, things like, for instance, your autograph books are $1.99 over there. If you buy yeah. that in the park, you're spending like $10. Um, those little glow fly spinny wand thingies that drive me bonkers are like seven bucks at the outlet. They're like 20 in the park. Um, so what we'll do is we'll hit the outlet first. We'll pick up costumes, ears, whatever, and then we'll hit the park. Um, and I'm able to either kind of pack it in a bag and surprise them with it when we get there or just go ahead and give it to them beforehand. Um, so that's one big way that we'll save money and not do the impulse guilt buy when we're in the park. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I know a couple of the ways that we have saved going to Disney is, you know, um, a lot of times if you don't want to like buy the costumes and stuff like that and spend a whole lot of money, you can always Disney bound. You can use whatever is in your closet, you know, use the colors and stuff like that. We've even made our own ears for special events, um, you know, and those are not that hard to make. There's a couple of tutorials on YouTube. I actually have a tutorial on there. I know, Megan, you have a post. I think you have a couple of posts of uh, how to make ears um, and they're really, really simple. They're not that hard to make and you can make them just about, you know, out of anything that you want, which saves, you know, saves you money, you know, because each ear is about 20 or 30 bucks. So, um, and if you're not crafty, the outlet does have the ears too. And they're three yeah. or $4, sometimes up to 10. But I know that they had the rose golds that everybody was so obsessed with for like 12 bucks. Nice. So, you know, they def that's definitely still an option. We do a lot of um, DIY costumes and what have you. And I can post links for that because we have a lot of that on the blog. We did, um, my son did Jack Skellington a couple of years ago and I did the ears and I did everything for that and um, sat in the three and a half hour line. Um, <laughs> but I could meet Jack. But, um, you know, and so that's one way to save. Another thing that we'll do is we'll take advantage of restaurants that have larger portions. So, you know, those things that are going to be more family size that are going to be easier to share. 
Um, so we may go to Casey's and get a big hot dog and then split that between the kids with fries or, you know, go to Pecos Bills and do the nachos and just load those stinkers up or whatever the case may be. You know, that's another way to save if you're going to buy food in the park is to kind of go through one of those meal places that's going to have a larger portion and then split it. Yeah. I know for me, like I have two little, so um, for us, it's kind of like a waste of money if I buy them stuff because half the time they won't eat it. So what mm. ends up happening is that if we do buy uh, food in the park, Dom will buy a plate, I'll buy a plate, and then he'll usually split it with Gio and I'll split it with Sebastian, you know, right. because I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste that kind of money on the kids if they're not going to eat. You know. The other thing to keep in mind is I know that Disney's friendly with this. Universal is friendly if you have food allergies, which I do. But um, you can bring your own food in. Now, you're not yeah. going to roll in a cooler. You're going to have to go back to the car if you're wanting to rock the cooler life. But, you know, you're able to pack things like Uncrustables or, you know, sandwiches or chips or, you know, if you're an allergy person, maybe you put in some produce and some nuts and some crackers or whatever the case may be. We're very well known for packing a backpack and having that with us. And it's got snacks, it's got drinks, it's got whatever we're going to need for the day so that we don't have to buy things while we're in the park. Just because, I mean, it adds up when you look at, you know, you're looking at 10 to $15 per person for a meal. Yeah. And then if you're there all day, you know, you eat two or three meals in the park and you're going to be spending a pretty penny. Um, yeah, we, we pack meals, too, because my kids like to snack like every five minutes. And I'm yes. like, no way I'm going to sit here and buy you something every five minutes. So, you know, we pack like the Honest Kid juice boxes. We make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, if you and. Let me just say this, because it's summertime, be cautious of what you pack. Because yes. if you start packing like ham and cheese sandwiches, it's going to melt and you're probably going to have to throw it away. So be careful what you pack. You know, and like don't if, pack chocolate, just don't even bother. And um, if you're going to the peanut butter, just make a jelly sandwich. You know, stuff like that, you know, but it helps, you know, with the And if you do uh, have... If you do have food allergies, Enjoy Life has um, cookies that are free of top eight allergens, and those hold up really well in a bag in the parks. I've had to bring those a couple times because I wanted a treat at an event where there weren't any treats that were allergy friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another option as well. You can also do um, those little freezer ice packs. You know, the ones I'm talking about, the really flat, skinny ones. You yep. can do those and put those in a little lunch box with some fruit. We find that if we pack up some watermelon or some pineapple, something along those lines, it can be a really nice, refreshing option on a really hot floor today. Um, yeah. You know, something like that. The other thing is you can do things like freeze go -Gurt because by the time you get to the afternoon, it's going to be thawed and it's going to be able to be eaten, or you can eat it frozen an hour after you get in the park because kids have zero patience and you still got, you know, a popsicle or a treat. Yeah. And the other thing you want to make sure to pack to, um, to save money is ponchos. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, you know, if you want to save money, you don't want to pay, you know, top dollar for ponchos over at Disney pack, pack some ponchos. You can find them at the family, family dollar, uh, Dollar General, um, sometimes even at the outlets, they have really good deals yep. on the ponchos that you can find there. Um, they were buck 25 last time I was there at the outlet. Yeah. You know, so, um, and you know, even like, uh, what I was going to say is you can save money too. Like if your kids are into pin trading, which my kids just started, I know Megan's family is really big into that. The outlets is a really great place to get pins, you know, to trade and stuff like that. And honestly, I go there because my kids are too young and they get pins and then they're like, oh, they just want the ones that have the best color. Like, it's not even like, oh, that one's amazing. Like, I want that one. No, it's just like, oh, I like that color. And I'm like, you're trading like such a good pin right now. No, I want that. <laughs> okay, oh so we're gonna touch on this for two seconds before we move forward because like you said, love to pin trade. Um, two wow. things. First of all, on eBay, if you find a quality seller, you can buy a large lot of pins for like 20 bucks. 
You can get like yeah. 50 of them for 20 bucks, which Ooh. makes it easier to trade with kids when they want to just throw away all your good ones. The other thing that I will do is on my lanyard, anything that I don't want to trade, I'll flip it backward. That way my kids can't trade a good one. Because they have traded my figments in the past and words have been said, don't trade my figment now. <laughs> Ooh. Don't take mama's figment because problems will ensue. I love figment. Yeah, um, but okay, so we, we talked about a little bit of ways to save, um, you know, with the food, with the pins, um, you know, a couple of different things. Um, a big one is tickets. Mm. As we know, parts can be super, super expensive if you go with a large family. I have a family of four. Megan has a family of four. Um, and at a hundred and some dollars a person, you're looking at like $500. At, and that's just for tickets. That's, that's just not a walk, walk in the food. door. Yeah, that's not cool <laughs> food or anything like that. So there are certain times where you want to buy tickets. For example, SeaWorld is having a save up to 50% summer flash sale right now where you can get your tickets for half off. So you want to be on the lookout for things like that. I also know that they do um, BOGO. So they'll do like buy one, get one free. Um, and they usually do that. I want to say they did it, I think, last year in October. Something you also like want to watch for Black Friday because Black Friday is when a lot of your parks. Maybe that's when they did it. Maybe that's when they did Black it. Was Friday, Black Friday, they always will run um, deals. Now, that said, you're not going to see Disney run a Black Friday deal because they don't have to. You're not going to see Universal necessarily do that because they don't have to. Um, but you'll see SeaWorld, Busch Gardens. You know, those parks are definitely, you know, fun spot. Anything like that, you're going to see a Black Friday deal. Um, so you definitely want to keep an eye out and book in, you know, book around Black Friday if you're already planning a trip and you know that it's coming. Now, with Universal, one of the things that I've learned as far as saving on tickets there is to bundle it with a hotel stay. Because I found that a lot of their discounts come into play when you bundle with a hotel stay. And the nice thing about staying on their hotels is you get in early and, you know, there's some other incentives. But really, they do offer a good amount of savings on your ticket price if you bundle it with a stay. Yeah. And um, the other thing I was going to say, too, like I know you said Disney doesn't do the Black Friday, but they do um, partner up with Visit Orlando once in a while. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll do like a bundle where you can save, I think it's like 20 or 30%. Um, it's something, it's something small, but it's something and it helps you save. And I know like as Florida residents, we do get a lot of breaks with some of the theme parks. Like we do get some specials, you know, that are, that are really, really cool. But for those of you that are coming and are out of state, this, uh, check the visit Orlando website because they do have specials on park tickets. Another hack that a lot of my friends do when it comes to Disney park tickets is you can buy Disney gift cards at either Sam's club or BJ's for a discount. And so, you know, you'd pay 40 or 45 for a $50 gift card. Now it's not much in the grand scheme of things, but that five or $10 every 50 is going to add up. And so what a lot of the, uh, my friends will do if they're going to plan a trip, say six months or a year out is every paycheck they'll pick up a gift card or two and they'll set those away and then when there's a deal on ticket they'll use all the gift cards and then they've saved five to ten dollars per time they've bought a gift card on that trip so it's going to be a little bit more labor intensive but the payout is you're going to save a good bit of money in the long run yeah and i want to say that um i know Publix is running a special on disney tickets and um, I, I forget, I think it was like $10 you were, you would, you were going to save or something like that. But they did have, the, so you want to check with the grocery stores like Publix. Sometimes Walmart even has specials for universal tickets. So that's another way for you to save money is just pay attention and see. Because sometimes they'll have like four tickets for a set amount, you know, that you can, you can save on. So that's another way to um, kind of save money. Um, and... Probably the other way to save money is through a credit card. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, like if you have a Disney credit card or you have any type of credit card that's theme park related, you will save money, you know, if you make purchases on it and you get your points and whatnot. So that's another way to save some money. And I think that the other thing that a lot of parents don't do that I think helps is manage expectations, you know, because the fact of the matter is your kids are going to see the kids that have done every single thing. You know, they're on their dream Disney trip or their dream Universal and they've bought the wand and they've bought the bippity boppity and they've bought the this, that and the other. And your kids are going to be looking at that going, well, but I want, but I want. And so what we will do is we'll manage expectations before we go in and we'll say, okay, look, these are the things I am getting you while we're here. These are the things I'm not. That way there's an understanding. Like we can go home if we're going to throw a fit because we don't have what so-and-so has, or we can enjoy a great day as a family and just know that we're going to get different things, you know? And so it's okay to kind of have that conversation beforehand so that there isn't a park meltdown. Yeah, and I was going to say, um, last, not last year, 2017, um, we, like, I don't know, for Christmas and birthdays, my kids have enough toys. So usually what we do is we tell our family members, because they always ask, what do you guys want for Christmas or your birthday? And I'm like, you know what? We want Disney tickets, or we want Universal tickets, or whatnot. And so, you know, by the time everybody puts, you know, money down, you know, you could have bought a couple tickets, you know, to whatever theme park you want to go to. And so that's usually another way that we save money. And I think um, that year we ended up buying, um, we put the down payment on for our annual passes, you know. And so, you know, that's a really good way to, to save money too. So. There you go, buddy. <laughs> um, but uh, and I think that it's a good idea too. along that line if you're saving up for a trip start putting away those gift cards that you can spend in the park you know yeah. maybe you don't have that whole couple hundred dollars to spend in the park all at once but if you're grabbing twenty dollars here and fifty dollars there throughout the year that's going to add up and just stick that in your trip stash and it'll be there for you know, because there's a lot of stuff that you can buy with the gift cards. You can do food, you can do experiences and what have you. And then you're not stressing that. The other thing is go into the parks with cash and have a certain budget for the day or have a gift card. I know a lot of people who will buy a gift card and that's their budget for the park that day. And once the gift card's gone, they're done spending because it's really, 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 did I say really? easy to overspend in the theme parks because you want all the things because yeah. everything looks incredible. Yeah. And so having that gift card or having that limit on yourself really gives you the reminder that like, Hey, we're done. We're not going to buy six more Dole Whips. We're not going <laughs> to, you know, whatever the case may be, we're done. Yeah. And I was going to say, usually before we go, uh, we'll scope out the theme park and we'll check what restaurants or what quick eats there are that fit within our budget and we're like, okay, this is where we're going to go. And this is what we have money for, you know, and I, we've done that with the kids. So they know beforehand, there is no surprise like, Hey, this is what this restaurant has. You know, this is where we're going to eat. You know what I mean? So and if um, you want, if you want that free for all experience where, you know, we're going to just make it rain, do a separate ticketed party. You know, do a not so scary where the candy flows like a river or do very merry where you can say yes to treats yeah. all night long. Oh, because yeah. at very merry, you can say yes to cocoa and ices and, you know, pretzels and cookies for the whole night because it's included in your party fee. Yeah, and, I, you know, so then you're getting there four or five o'clock, you get a whole night in the park and you're able to say yes pretty much all night long. Yeah, so. yeah, I agree. Um, and yeah, um, I don't know if, or I think Orlando has a city pass, right? I think they just got one. Um, I think it's a new concept that they're kind of fleshing out because I know that Tampa area has one. Yeah. Um, 
I know when I went to Atlanta, I used the city pass, and that saves you money too when you're doing attractions and theme parks and stuff like that. Um, uh, so Orlando I mean, does have a city pass, but your prices are going to vary depending on what you want to put on it. Um, so that's something else to look at and kind of decide if that's something that'll help you save in the long run. The other thing yeah. to look at is things like AAA will get you discounts on tickets sometimes. If you're an educator, if you're a veteran, um, those are all things that are going to help you potentially save on your on your travel. Um, and then the other thing you can look at is booking during off season. So, yeah. you know, my husband works in the hotel industry and the prices will shoot up sometimes almost double if you're in a busy season versus the off season. And so if you're able to book your trip in a time when most people aren't coming, you know, you're going to be able to get a better deal and you're going to be able to get a better value on those tickets. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Um, uh, the other thing I was going to say too, and I it totally like, I totally forgot what I was going to say, but it was along the lines of saving. I'll probably remember some in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So but, what do you do when it comes to your little ones as far as things like, mom, I want the picture from this. I want the picture from that. Do you do things like photo pass or? So we haven't gotten to that stage yet. Like the kids are not so like, oh man, I need a picture. You know, okay. like I, I have to, we haven't gotten into that stage yet. They're more concerned with, I want to ride this or, you know, I want to eat this you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, we really haven't had to buy the photo pass or anything like that. If I, if I do have something that I really want to take a picture, then I'll just buy it flat out. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's how we usually do pictures and stuff like that. And I mean, usually most of the time I, I have the phone or the camera and usually, you know, a cast member from anywhere of the theme parks will just take a picture of us and, you know, we do that. Well, and the other thing, well, the reason I ask is because um, Disney Memory Maker is another way that people can save money because I want to say, I, I Googled it, it's just under $200. But here's yeah. the thing with that. How much would you pay a professional photographer to go with you all day? Because if you do some of those special magic shots, if you do family pictures in front of the castle and you do some of those character family group pictures and stuff. Those are the kind of things where if you use that bad boy and you use it a few times over, it's going to, it's going to play out to be valuable for you. Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. If you're coming on vacation, I would definitely, definitely, you know, because, get it for sure. Because if you're on vacation and I know it's different if you're local, but if you're on vacation and you don't have to carry a camera and you don't have to worry about lugging, all of that around and somebody can do high quality professional level pictures of you. I mean, it's definitely worth the investment to go ahead and do a memory maker type thing. Just yeah, to yeah. Bolt, get all of those photos. Um, sure. And then yeah, I agree. Um, and if you can stay on either own property or on a, at a hotel, that's going to give you transportation to a hotel. I mean, to the parks, you're going to save a great deal on parking. Parking is well over $20 now. Yeah. So, you know, it, it can be tempting to save money and stay in a hotel that's off property. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to spend $20, $25 a day on parking, are you still saving enough that it's worth it? Right, right. And, you know, there's shuttles. I mean, some of these hotels have shuttles, you know, from the hotel to the parks. And so it makes it easier, um, you know, for that. And, you know, there's a couple of hotels that are like good, uh, good neighbor hotels for Disney, or a couple of good hotels that are close to um, Universal and stuff like that. Aw. That's um, cool. <laughs> so, um, you know, those are all things that you want to look at, you know, that are, that can offer you a good price too. Because sometimes uh, the hotels, depending on when they are, they will offer you a good rate, you know, and it's well worth it. Definitely. And, so, you know, and make sure to check those shuttle times because some of them will only run shuttles twice a day and it's hot in Florida and you probably aren't. Oh, oh, 
He's coming back. We lost her for just a second. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You're good. It went away. Um, I think I was talking about shuttles. With the shuttles, yeah. you don't want to, because it's so hot in Florida, you don't want to stay somewhere where the shuttle's only going to run once in the morning and once at night. Yes. Because if you get hot and tired at four o'clock, you don't want to have to try and push everybody through till nine or 10 at night when that shuttle runs. And you'll end up paying for a, an Uber or whatever the case may be. I yeah. know because we did it on our honeymoon where mm -hmm. we were going to go all day and we were going to be amazing. And we ended up calling an, and it wasn't an Uber back then. It was a cab back then, but we ended up calling a cab and saying, listen, we got to get to the hotel. We're dying here. Yeah. Make sure that you're somewhere where those are going to run at least three or four times a day. Because if not, you're going to find yourself paying for a cab or miserable in the parks. For sure. Well, we've given you some great pointers and some stuff to really chew on um, with this episode on how to save some money. Especially now that you're coming for the, the summertime and stuff like that. These are all things you want to look at for sure. Um, so we thank you guys for joining us. Um, stay tuned next Tuesday as we talk some more. We'll be back um, here at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. But thank you for joining us tonight, guys. Hope have you have a good night. rest of the night. Talk to you guys later.